forever. Dog. So, do you want to talk about your the combo you had with your your nieces? Please tell us about this. For the holiday season, <laughs> the ho- so so I've been pitching this movie for a minute, but then my little nieces. Uh, let me get their birth. What is it? Uh, five, three, and one, and two, five, three, two. So basically, my nieces FaceTime me the other day and told me we had to watch <laughs> Jingle Jangle and proceeded to tell me all about Jingle Jangle and asked me, do I sing? And I said, no. And they were very disappointed <laughs> that I can't sing. They wanted you to like <laughs> sing the song. Because <laughs> they were telling me, because they were telling me about like, because I, I will say this, I didn't know it was a musical. And so they're like, oh, they're talking about the songs and I was, and they were singing them. And they're like, why aren't you singing? And I was like, well, I don't know the songs and I don't sing. And the <laughs> disappointment... <laughs> And like we, I have one, I have the youngest one, Kaya, uh, she has a very, um, raspy voice, but she's like very, very young. And I'm like, oh man, you remind me of like T-Boz and Sade, like it's a, it's a great singer voice. And when she sings, it is so cool. Cause she's not even two and a half or three yet. And I'm like, yes. And I guess like kids would like make fun of her, I guess when they would have zoom classes, cause her voice sounds Aww. like that. And I'm like, no. You gonna be in Jingle Jangle because you got the singing voice to get in the jangle. You That's know what right. I mean? Yes. So it was great, man. They're texting me now <laughs> saying, Mommy, put us to bed. Have fun. Oh, that, that's, the, that's, that's the message. I tried to get, I tried yeah. to get them on the podcast, but they, um, that was cute. Up all night. I was hoping. Do I was they hoping, have their own cell phone? Was, no, this is Whitney. So, my, <laughs> so this is my cousin's cell phone. But I'm assuming I'm um, the oldest one is texting me from it. It's so man. Oh, they cute. They cute. I'm like, look at y'all. I love hanging out with yeah. them and then going home <laughs> once they start going crazy. I'm like, this is fun. Yeah. Whitney, what, take these kids did you back. Have a. F- favorite holiday film growing up? I don't know. I love The Grinch and Hot yeah, and I like Home the Jim like, Grinch and Nightmare Before Christmas. I watched both of those. Oh yeah, those are good. I liked The Muppets Christmas Carol, which I felt like the set oh, yes. felt a little bit familiar. Like I was like it had a similar yes. kind of feel to The Muppets Christmas Carol, like that kind of like enclosed like New Englandy like or Englandy like cobblestone, you know. What about you, Tessa? How about you? Um, I don't think I have a favorite Christmas one. I like old movies. Like right. I have, I like, watch a lot of like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and Mary Poppins. It's a Wonderful Life. I've I've watched a wonder. It's a Wonderful Life, but it's like in the background. Mm. I have never seen It's a Wonderful Life. I was like, who's 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 Wonderful yeah. Life is this? <laughs> huh? Where the brothers and sisters at? Huh? Whose life is yeah, this? Yeah, but I mean, come on. It's, it's, yeah, I every get time it. a bell rings, an angel gets its wings, you know? Just it's hear a little dark. jingle jangle, and then... It... Oh, my God. That is what this was about? I've been upset for a full 30 seconds. The second that was said. what this was all about? You didn't freeze. Yeah, no, I'm you just didn't saying every freeze. time... You're physically able to move. Don't freeze. A bell like rings, <laughs> an angel gets his wings. No, yes. we heard it the first time. You don't right. repeat it. Yeah, and you know what the sound of a bell makes. No, I don't. Jingle jangle. No, make no, don't ding dong. get deeper to the That's not true. That's not true. A bell goes deep. Okay, true. but <laughs> I'm just saying, when you ring a bell, you know, a little bell, you hear... The full title is Jingle Jangle, a ring Christmas a story. A Christmas journey. Jingle you jangle. Didn't even, <laughs> don't do that. All right, we're not doing full titles here. What is this? What is, what is this? Wait, Doug sis win. Movies? Sis win. <laughs> <laughs> sis yeah, win. With the Come on, always got like a jingle is. jangle. It's a Christmas journey. <laughs> Why'd you freeze? Christmas I hate this. Journey, <laughs> because it was journey. Because that was her name, journey. journey. Okay, but for real, <laughs> that's true. Oh, I didn't even peep that till right now. Honestly, Tessa, that's right. I didn't even notice mm-hmm. that till right now. <sighs> Let's wow, just start the show. Off in your head, Rod? Did you just hear a little oh. wow? Dingle, dingle. <laughs> no, no, Ding. Ding no, Ding no. Dong. You're right. I'm no. sorry. I'm sorry. We're Thank s- you guys for you know placating me with this. I'm glad we all went on a Christmas journey. Oh. <laughs> Rude. Wow. Wow. Look at his <laughs> face right now. He's just like staring. Wow. Let's start the show. <laughs> Gross. 
Black Jack. All right. All right. All right. All right. Wow. I'm I'm very upset. (laughs) Well, anyway. (laughs) Welcome to Black Men Can't Jump in Hollywood. Oh, you Hollywood better City. believe I'm the magic man G. Can you dig it? You can't spell magic without G. Oh, no. Man, the villains <laughs> always have the best that was the be- I, songs. Listen, that was a really I good song. Turned all the lights on. <laughs> I danced around the apartment. I was ready. I'm putting it back on. I'm putting it back on. My man on. came out in the, the Wiz green suit. And everybody came out. With. Ooh, you noticed the Wiz. You <laughs> noticed the Wiz. Wiz. In the audience, I was the, like, oh, snap. There were so many odes to different, I feel like. I feel so like there many. was so much homage to, homage. Old, old, to old films. Yeah, and absolutely. Other children, children's yes. family films. Yes. So many homages. Um. Didn't he, didn't he put the cape on? Like I'm about to rewind that right now. Go ahead. Uh, for those listening Shoot. for the first time, this incredible leading voice you're listening to is Jonathan Brown. Leading? Oh God. He said leading <laughs> voice? Ugh. How do you tolerate Why? this? Ugh. I come on. Ugh. I have been here for minutes. He's been doing that lately, and it disgusts me every time, and I hate going after it, okay? Y'all created this. Y'all created this. This oh. voice. Why is Gerard wait, Milligan. Why you get so in the <laughs> well, I mean, he said right, it up. Right. But the girls like it. The little girls like it. <laughs> and this voice is James oh. the Third. Oh. Why? That's, that's James' hey, yo, version of sex. Hey, yo, James low-key oh, no. probably James probably got the deepest voice out of everybody. He just be hiding it low-key. We nope, don't know. This is how I oh, sound. Oh, sounded like Barry White. Oh, God. <laughs> And Ugh. we have a special returning, what is this, six times now? Hey, listen, this ain't even a guest. Yeah, this, this is a new is co-host. Definitely... <laughs> this is <laughs> like, this ain't Alex Baldwin on SNL. Just yeah. a, <laughs> might as yes. well be a cast yeah. member. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you... But they don't pay me like they pay Alex Baldwin. <laughs> That's true. Do you think they pay Alex Baldwin much? <laughs> I mean, I... Of course he gets paid. I mean, I thought they got, they got yeah, him. I mean, like, more than, they pay more than SAG minimum? Yeah, he no, paying him definitely. More than, yeah, yeah, you yeah. think they paying him SAG minimum to do all the Trump appearances? He's got. <laughs> they paying. They paying oh at least a month of rent. He is uh, like Alec Baldwin's renting anything. All right, everyone, it's Tessa Claire Hirsch. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Woo! Oh yeah! Woo! Jingle, 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 jingle! <laughs> I mean, I felt like we're in the season. You know what I mean? I, uh, I really season. forced my own, myself onto this podcast. I really asked. I begged to get come on for this one because this movie neat. I wanted to be here for this movie. It's funny because uh, John was like, Tessa wants to be on. And we were like, cool. Like, it wasn't. Like, I had to force. Like, I had to elbow was, my way in. Y'all like, can't yeah, hold she... me back. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I was waiting to see how long it would be before Tessa started shading us for like for something. I'm I didn't know shade. what it was going to be. This movie changed me. I'm not. There is no shade. Wow. My heart. My heart. Amazing. My wow. heart is like wait, wait, the Grinch would you... who then oh, saved wow. Christmas. I am wow. your heart new grew. person. My heart grew. I have space for all the little people below now. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's re- the little people. Oh my god. Honestly. As y'all talk, I'm legit trying to rewind till I get back to um, wow. Keegan's Shana's intro. So y'all keep going. She wow. wasn't shading us. <laughs> it was, it was wow. in a speech Listen. about how she wasn't shading us. <laughs> oh my goodness. Us. That was... <laughs> That was that was me was level trolling right there, like just right at the end. Oh, All right, the little well, peons, I have time for you. <laughs> the, uh, for those. Uh, who don't know, we are a film review podcast. We review films of leading black actors. We talk about them in the context of race and diversity in Hollywood. And today we are reviewing the 2000 Christmas movie, Jingle Jangle. Jingle Jangle. Journey. Uh, I can hear the music in the woo! background right now. Well, yeah, I got chills. I, well, that's because literally Jira's playing. Jira's playing. It. Yeah, what song are you down, watching Jira. right now? <laughs> Magic Man G. Come on, man. Magic Man G. <laughs> Yo, Magic, Magic Man, man G. G. Can we just my talk man... about Magic Man G for the next two hours? <laughs> no. My man had a puppet. So many more, he had the puppet so version. Many more songs yes, to talk you're about. right. There um, is more. To, there is actually so you're right, more you're to right, discuss Justin, than you're that. Right. But that was there's my all, favorite part. Let me acknowledge There's a lot <laughs> to Magic discuss. Magic Man G. There's so much um, to discuss. There's so sorry. much. Oh. So this movie, um, let's see. It stars Forrest Whitaker, 
uh, hey. Keegan Michael Key, Oof. Felicia uh, Rashad, um, and then some of the. Mm-hmm. Let's see these little girls. I'm just making sure I got each one. Yeah. So Madeline Mills. Oh man, you got to remember you Madeline can... Mills. Ma- the oh, yeah, new Madeline. star, the, Madeline yes, Mills. Yes, introducing Madeline Mills. Introducing the star. Yeah, yes. she was Madeline great. Mills. The she was fantastic. Leading actress, star. So good. Her first thing mm-hmm. ever. Um, um, Anika Noni Rose and Anika, the younger oh version God. of her. She was so good. Diana. Uh, Ricky Martin is also in this film. Yes, yeah. Ricky Martin <laughs> as Don Juan Diego. Mm. My man <laughs> killed it. Living la vida I stopped like when, the, when, that, when that little toy started moving. I was like, "Who is doing this?" <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I looked it Me up too. immediately. I looked it up too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I looked it up too. Like who the hell? <laughs> and then Lisa uh, Davina Phillip. Introducing. Yes. But Lisa not for long, you know what I mean? She's Davina here. Which actress? Phillip. Which actress was she? She um, was uh, Mrs. Johnston. She was great. Oh, she was so she was good. Great. I mean, oh next my level. goodness! Everybody needs to stop what they're doing, not even listen to this podcast, <laughs> and make sure you go back and watch this entire movie. Wait, 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 wait! Again, time out. Not listen. Turn but... off this podcast. <laughs> turn off. This well, go see it and then con- and, and wait a minute. <laughs> and listen to the <laughs> quality voices. Wow. Lisa and Davina Phillip. This is her moment. <laughs> We are, this is her moment. This is an introduction to her, to the world. This is her moment. We are going to see so much more of her. She is, we we witnessed a moment yeah. here. She was, she was Oda May in the original London cast of Ghost. The musical. Oh, oh interesting. What? Yeah, in 2011. Yeah, she's a Brit. Oh, okay. sh- she's a Brit. She's so a Brit. Wow. So good. She's been on the And website. director... The director David Talbot. I got so yes. excited looking Talbert. looking him up. I was like, "Whoa, my man been here for a minute!" And he and they get, they were just like, "Here is a budget." <laughs> like like Netflix didn't. They Bruh. were like, "Let's give David E. Talbert the but like the budget." They gave him all the money. <laughs> yes, I mean they every really star did. signed on to this. John Legend, Mike Jackson. Who else did the music? There was four people. John Legend helped produce as well. He helped produce it too. Came in, did the music. They were just like, listen, f- first Sunday was was that was the movie. We all we all <laughs> we all loved first Sunday. <laughs> we all loved almost Christmas. Let's give, but you haven't had the budget that you deserve. <laughs> and they Truly. just gave him all of the money. He honestly rocked it. Yo, I my I looked this, I looked them up and I was like. Almost Christmas, <laughs> the get like no, that's no disc. I, like it's a good movie. I'm like, but there is nothing in me that was like, oh yeah, that will translate. And watching this movie, I was like, brother, and he wrote it. But, I mean, yeah, and he wrote on. it. I wonder what the budget was for this. We don't know because it's a Netflix film. We also don't know how much it made. We do know that the Rotten Tomato score currently is ninety five percent. Absolutely, and honestly, that should other be hundred and ten. <laughs> Should be 110. Exactly. It should be over 100. It should be. Y'all, over this 100. is a movie where black people get to be in like. I, I kept trying to. Comp- I kept trying to think about this movie about like w- when do we ever see black people in kind of one of these like fantastical, like beautiful like dreamscapes? And I thought about the Wiz, and I was trying to think like when's the other time like in this movie. No one gets turned into a toad. No one's like a lion. Like they're black people just singing and dancing. And it's so beautiful. And they got money. And I'm looking at Felicia Rashad with the brains. Uh, oh! This movie started and every like 15 to 30 seconds, I would just be like, no, stop. No. And then Kat was like, you hate on already? I was like, no, a movie like this has never existed before. <laughs> like this is the first time I've ever seen this shit before. It was crazy. I, uh. Uh. <laughs> Oh God! Please, do we do? What do we do? I like. I feel like if I'm about to just gush over this movie. We I, have like, to do gush. We, just start? Well, so- we, we must gush. <laughs> yeah, this is a like life changing. Absolutely, for, for generations, forevermore, so will forever have this movie, Absolutely. and everyone mm. forevermore will know Jingle Jangle and the characters of Jingle Jangle. This is a moment. This is huge. Yeah. And we must gush. I got chills, man. It's so good. The fact, like, I, I, people at home, just think about it, in all honesty. Like, to me, the fact that, like, three young girls called, like, my phone and talked to me about a movie Aww. that 
for two, like, honestly, it was almost two hours just about how much they love this damn movie. And, and they also love you. Your nieces something. love you that they called you <laughs> about this. It's so sweet. Uh, I wish I had that uh, relationship. Yeah, That's so sweet. They're dope. They're dope. But it's also, it's like, how many other kids got to see this? Like, to me, the only thing, and, and I do not have a complaint, the only thing is, like, I just wish theaters were open and kids got to see this. Like, could you imagine going into a freaking theater I know. and seeing, like, a bunch of little kids, especially a well, bunch of little black kids, dancing yeah. in the freaking... Because I'll be honest, st- this, Oh, my God. Uh, I mean, we can do initial thoughts. I mean, I guess it's cut part of it. But, like, this gave me... This gave me very much... Um, the greatest showman vibes where it's yeah. like <laughs> you just are like this is just pure joy and yeah it's it's things that does, we didn't get to see it does, in the theater does your audience know that greatest show the greatest showman is one of your favorite movies of all time <laughs> do they know this well, i don't know if i i don't know <laughs> does your of all time, we need but, to acknowledge well, that greatest it, showman it is, is fire it definitely is. <laughs> to, yeah it is i just saw it it's great okay yes john john cannot get through the first 20 minutes without crying <laughs> <laughs> one of my yeah. top songs yeah. on spotify not last year but the year before was the greatest show that was my one of my top songs on spotify yeah because I, it's it's incredible several yeah <laughs> he I have, I have videos of him washing dishes and singing to himself to the greatest show man <laughs> Tessa, please please send that to the group thread please oh boy. like that's not even to blackmail john it's just I just want to see that kind of joy. It's <laughs> truly, it's, it's, it's that is his happiest is when he's singing <laughs> Greatest Showman. Um, but uh, Tessa found <laughs> out that the choreographer for this movie was also the choreographer for The Greatest Showman. And oh, the choreography absolutely. is... That explains... It's so the choreography good. is yeah. fire. <laughs> it's like... It is. He's, uh, it, he's Australian, Ashley Whalen, and mm. he did Greatest Showman, and he also did. I think he did the mob scene in that Justin Timberlake and um, Mila Kunis movie. Remember when oh, he did the a flash friends, mob? The, the, oh, uh, friends of benefits. Friends of benefits. I think he also did that dance movie, which was a good movie. Yes, it was a good movie. And that was the good one out of those two movie. movies that came out. Yeah, yeah, that, that was the was good little, one. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you know. yeah, this movie was awesome. I, I mean, there's so many great acti- uh, actors in it uh, that were being introduced or at least giving a, a bigger platform. Um, the choreography was fire. The music was great. The singing was really good. Um, the set pieces were really super fun. Oh. Um, I, like, I, I could nitpick here and there a couple of things, but... I could. How dare you? I mean, I could. I, There's I mean, nothing to nitpick. Uh, but, it's actually your lack of imagination. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, there you go. <laughs> to your own childhood <laughs> spirit that makes you not able to because what well, you know what it is. All of the things that he would nitpick are like logic leaps that a child, no. is f- a child and a free spirit and someone who's connected to the Christmas <laughs> spirit and who believes would be able is. to do. But the he... levels to which you just dragged him for no reason. <laughs> 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 you went to so many different <laughs> spheres. <laughs> I wish, I wish, like I've never wanted us to be like a video <laughs> podcast, but today I, you, just, you just saw John <laughs> looking up <laughs> And that's, that's it kept going. <laughs> went further and further down. And then he just dropped it off to the side. He just started to just give up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, but he had so much because at one point he wow. was like, no, I wouldn't do that. And then that's it kept going. And he just stopped. <laughs> I didn't even hear it. Oh, of course you did it. Of course. <laughs> so, freaking oh, oh my god! One this way is... ticket to drag town. <laughs> I wasn't ready for this. This made my day. Oh, this is great. Um. Oh. All right. I'm, all right. Y'all. Y'all give me your. <laughs> I'm going to get some water. <laughs> he's, he's he's literally leaving the room. Hey everyone. Uh, today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there a something interfering with your happiness or maybe preventing you from uh, achieving your goals like i don't know uh, a pandemic yes better help will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist I mean, but how long does that take man you can, you can start communicating in under 48 hours Jira. all right that's not bad i don't know if i need a crisis hotline you know it's not it's not a crisis hotline it's not self-help 
it's professional counseling done securely online. I mean, from this, it says there's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. Huh. Oh, that's true. So you can like log into your account anytime and just send a message to your counselor. Yes, huh. you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Mm, visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily. All right. Yes. You can go to www.betterhelp.com slash reviews. You know, just check some of those out to get comfortable. You know what I was going to say? We're going we to get people 10% yeah. off their first month. All they got okay, to well, That's what I was going to say. Is that what was you going to say that too? You just go to betterhelp.com slash jump, you know, and that's yeah. better help. H E L P. Okay, I, I know how to spell help, but but thanks for anyway. I was spelling yeah. it for you, Bray. I was spelling it. Oh my for god! You. I already. Okay, look. So many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all fifty states. So to get that special offer code for Blackman Cantrip listeners, ten percent off your first month. Just go to betterhelp.com slash jump. <laughs> 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 All right, let's have some fun. Okay, Jingle Jangle starts, okay, with the queen, Felicia Rashad, uh, Miss Huxtable herself, oh. you know. Yes. With her grandkids, right, her two grandkids. They're asking for a Christmas story, but they want a new Christmas story, and she brings out a box. The fire, you forgot about the fire. Oh, the fire, you right. They were. Yes, the little girl sees, <sighs> fi- sees some magic in the fire, and she said, tells her brother, did you see that? And she said, and he's like, no. It's just fire. And mm-hmm. Tessa turned to me and was like, that's me and that's you. <laughs> <laughs> but also, this movie is the epitome of, this movie is almost like, you know, they told, you know, told the director, hey, what do you want to write about? Hey, I want to make a movie about black girl magic. Like straight up, like it is literally absolutely generations up. And I know it's, I know it's, I know it's about you know Jingle Jangles about like you know uh, Forrest Whitaker, but it, to me it's really not. It, to me it's almost like you could say it's about like these three generations of of women. Like we start with spoiler, we start with you know Journey. We hear the story about her mom, then how Journey gets involved, and it's just like this beautiful lineage. Yeah. I, it's, uh, a thing that I also thought that was great about the, the representation of magic was that it was like both an understanding of like science and equations. Mm-hmm. And then the understanding of that is is how you can then see and then meld magic. Like it was like mm-hmm. you had yeah. to have that knowledge first in order to be connected to the magic world. I thought that was that was beautiful. Also, I just want to shout out like I know we said it already, but to see them have this kind of budget. Mm. It, I mean, you. before we even get to the puppets, it's like just Felicia Rashad in this room, the, the costuming was beautiful. Oh, yeah. Just seeing like the fire dance and like you just, you could feel that they had support. You know what I mean? Like from the, from the very get go. And then we get to the yeah. puppets and the flashback. I'm like, these graphics look beautiful. They were I also, oh. I also love the, the meaning behind that line, it's time for a new story. Oh. You know? <laughs> they oh, said that, yeah. I was like, oh, damn, this Just, is good. I and, was <laughs> done. I was done. I was already screaming with joy at the, at the screen. Oh. And, and because it was delivered, so, I mean, you have someone like Felicia Rashad, Rashad who could deliver this line, but like a lot of times in movies, we get these things where people say something like like meaningful, but it's like, I don't know. It, it feels so forced, and this it mm-hmm. felt it was like completely correct. The the you know advertisements I mean? for Tenet, and I can't <laughs> find these early teasers. But the early teasers were like, "It's time for a." It was literally like, "It's time for a new kind of hero." And then you pan to John David Washington in a Chris Nolan movie, and you're just like, "Yeah, this is Chris Nolan being like, I have a black man at the center of my <laughs> movie yeah. now." Right. And it was like yeah. so. It was like cringeworthy, disgusting. But like in the context of this movie, you're like, absolutely yes. Yes. Yeah. New story. The only difference is it's us telling the story. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Which is so beautiful. And also, <clears throat> just Felicia Rashad, just, I just, 
she doesn't act. She does something different. It's a different thing she's doing. And every time she says a word or breath, it's so filled with love. Mm, it's yes. magical. Like, yeah. it feels so good to be with her while she's on screen. Yeah. It's such a gift. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it, you know, oh man, I have chills. You know, think about it now. It's something about when we go to that flashback and seeing the young version of Django um, as the greatest inventor ever, right? right. Uh, greatest inventor ever. This world is diverse. So it's not just like the Black yes. city. It's super diverse. And this Black dude with his wife and his daughter is the youngest inventor, has one of the biggest shops. Matter of fact, it's so funny, Brock. Now, man, you mentioned that the set reminded you of... Um, Christmas of, uh, Carol. Christmas Carol. But it's funny because... It reminded me of The Greatest Showman because it reminded yeah, me of too. like in The Greatest Showman, um, his shop was kind of like almost in that kind of cul-de-sac. Like it, it just felt, it felt the same, but almost like brighter and a little bit more, more it just was colorful, more colorful. And I was like, oh man, I love that this black dude has this shop. Like everybody comes into the shop, everything's going to happen. And I just love seeing this first dance number because I was like, ooh, we going big, <laughs> baby. I, I, man, because you know what it is? And this is another thing. After seeing certain musicals, you realize the budget and scale people have. And to see they had one wide shot um, um, when, when um, Mrs. Janko was singing and it was just a, a big pan out and you could see almost the whole screen filled with dancers. And I was like, yes. man, this is dope as hell, you know? Kind of really uh, good. <laughs> for anybody who still is on, like, not sure if they like movie musicals and they, like, think, like, oh, movie musicals are, like, cats. Like, this is, <laughs> <laughs> this is what is possible. This is what cats should have been. It should have been jaw-dropping dance like mm -hmm. this the the skill of being able to capture dance on screen and group dance on screen like there's a style there's a way to do it everything about the cats style like missed it and it made it turned off a whole like generation of people to musicals which is like devastating to me and also the musical cats which was so good and like this <laughs> re no yeah, the, cats yeah cats no, so is actually a good musical I don't the you are you. wrong the it whole, is amazing isn't, isn't the whole play just an introduction of different cats it is <laughs> so creative oh my and God. so exciting <laughs> and this is the problem you're using your adult brain and not your creative yeah, right. brain which is like right. you really miss the whole point of this entire movie which was about jealous of cats <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just saying what's so funny is when I said it I felt nothing but fear because I saw Tessa pause and I, I, I saw her go am I going to drag this nigga real quick am I going to be nice about it and then she was like alright cool I'm going to politely drag this nigga real quick yeah. I got the a little Felicia like Rashad in me I have a little Felicia Rashad I have a little There's bit just of like Claire a little bit. <laughs> just a little oh my god the other thing I liked about to, to, the, to the credit of this of this particular um, movie musical about this opening song was that like, it really felt like uh, we were getting a glimpse inside uh, his head. Like it wasn't like, now I'm singing a song to everyone. It was like, this is what I'm thinking and feeling right now. There was some weird, <sighs> I don't know how they were, I do not know how to put into words how they were able to do this, but like, it really felt like well, now we're looking- yeah. A, it's a window into this guy's soul instead of totally. what can some, it can sometimes feel like. And now a song on top of this movie, right, you know, right. mm -hmm. and it's, it's set up the, the relationships you, you saw where things were going to, were going to go. You know what I mean? Like, which sometimes music movie musicals don't do that. It's just like a, a big opening number to be like, look at us, we're singing like blah, blah, blah. blah. And like it introduces some people, but you don't, you don't feel like fully get who they are, but like, yeah. You know, you set up, hit, you you see Mr. Jangle and he's he's the greatest inventor and he has all this stuff. But you also see that he's kind of he's ignoring his apprentice. You know, you mm -hmm. you you see like he's connected with his family, but he's his head is a little bit over here. Mm -hmm. So you understand, you know, when he loses his, 
you know, his inventions, why he falls into that kind of depression. And then like, I don't know, it just, it set it up really, you kind of understood everything really well. I completely agree with you. And I just think this is, this is, I'm, I just want people to understand this is what musicals are supposed to do. The reason that a person in a story goes to music is because the emotion has gotten so big that we now must express it through song. And also, you should start in one place in the story And by the end of the song, you should be in a different place in the story. You shouldn't be summarizing what has happened and you shouldn't be talking about where you are right now in the moment. You should be moving the story along in song. And that's what a good musical does. And that's clearly what David E. David E. Talbert clearly appreciates musicals and understands the structure and art of it. It followed a very classic musical structure. Mm. Yeah, my my <clears throat> slight nitpick uh-oh, was that. Oh, here you go. <laughs> the, I just thought in the be- very beginning, I didn't really feel this way. The rest of the movie, the the lip syncing was just a little bit. Uh, it, I could f- I could hear the studio track and see the acting and being like, it's not quite matching specifically with the younger Mister Django. I'll say Kat didn't know that this was a musical, I don't think. And the second young Django came out and the music shifted to like a hip hop song. She was like, what's <laughs> why is it a dance party all of a sudden? I was like, because they're all about to get down. And then they did. <laughs> but she didn't know. Like it threw her off, too. And I don't know if I was just ready for it or like excited <laughs> for this to for that shift to happen. But I don't know. It didn't it didn't read that way to me, but it, it definitely did to her. I had no idea it was a musical, but it's funny because what. This is this this is this is the messed up part about me. Uh, once I realized it was a, a musical, I was like, "Oh shit, we about to go. We about to have a hip hop one." I'm gonna see. Like, I thought the songs were gonna like. <laughs> I thought every song was gonna be like <laughs> this is messed up, like a black style, like, like a uh, a different genre of like you know. This one's gonna be like the R and B track. Yeah, this one's gonna be the, the hip hop track. Song. Yeah, this is then we right. got the tribal music. Yeah, I yeah, have yeah. I have no. <laughs> reason to think that i just was somebody like well, <laughs> oh you do no I was like, it's because they used they would do stuff like that like hollywood because you've been oppressed by the white gaze for too long <laughs> yeah, that's true i it's did see they would have like, on yeah. broadway and 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 plankton um he did he had a hip-hop number that was written by ti and i was like "Ooh, this is real good and i was expecting like if, if you know what never mind let me no spongebob musical was a good ass musical it's so fire. I, you know what it, it was? Is. I didn't want I didn't want it to be quote unquote blackified, but there was something about having like this black musical and having some of the the stylings that have popularized black music incorporated into it. And they and they did do it. Like I remember at, at one point when they had the snowball fight, it kind of had, I felt like I was listening to like an Afro beat. And I was like, oh, yes. this is fire. I was like, this is, this is really cool, yeah. man. It, uh, and they and Ashley Whalen, the choreographer, totally met that and mm-hmm. to, like blended this amazing like musical theater style that he has that's very unique to him that so much that we recognized it before we knew it was him. And then he also like made it like very he like gave some like Afro like cool stanky leg mm-hmm. movements and stuff, especially <laughs> in that snowball <laughs> dance. He got yeah, that he little had, girl. He, the girl was the girl was killing it, but then you turn over to Forrest Whitaker. He get that one little two step with the yeah. Yo. He was, he was, he was, he he was doing good. it too. He was he like, was, "Hey, he, I got some moves." He was trying <laughs> like, "Listen, he man, did. don't sleep on Forrest Whitaker." Listen, <laughs> I sleep. am such a fan. But wait, yeah. So, so let's go back. So we see, so we see Django's apprentice. You know, Django has just made after the big musical number. He's made this talking doll. That's Ricky Martin. Yeah, Th- through like some weird magic drop. Yeah, that he had been waiting for. He, he was waiting, waiting for... for this one special thing. Yeah, to finally arrive. Did that ever come back? Did, like did the no right? No. Just, okay. Yeah, like uh, specifically what that con- connection was. That never yeah. came back. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, we never found out what exactly that ingredient was, but but he was going to mass produce this guy, um, mm-hmm. and then but the guy was very pompous, <laughs> mm-hmm. like immediately, and then he was like, "Wait a minute, a million of me." You know, it's only me. Like he was selfish. He tricked. He tricked the, the neglected, you know, apprentice and stealing him yeah. in the book. Uh, I was wondering where this was going to go because I was like, huh, interesting. 
Um, and then we flash to like, you know, Django neglecting his, like, the, oh my God, it was so sad. We flash to like the montage of like J- uh, Django going through all the, all the depression, like the yes, money loss, his wife. This stop motion uh, animation uh, was really uh, beautiful. Like, and, and, and so I loved nice. it. Like by the end, I was like, oh yeah, they were just like, they were like, we're about to make a Christmas movie. We're going to have the Rudolph uh, you know, the heat miser, Frosty the Snowman vibes. They were like, we're going to yeah. do totally. everything we can. And it, in, and, but in it this. works. It, it worked. It, it worked it really feel, well. Yeah. Didn't feel, yeah, like sometimes people do that and you're like, what? Like, that's not, it's not fitting. They really, like, yep. I mean, yeah. Talbert did such a good job because everything fit together beautifully. Like, it was a full package. Absolutely. It, everything felt right. Yes. It worked together like a to- like like one of Jangle's inventions. Like it was Aww. just like <laughs> it, it was beautiful, like man. One of Jangle's inventions. Yeah. That's so sweet. <laughs> uh, one of my one yeah. of my favorite one of my favorite scenes is you know when we catch up and now it's Forrest Whitaker, and the guy from the bank comes in. And it's like, hey man, you either gotta give the money back, close, or like come up with like the new something with, revolutionary, something revolutionary, right? And I love when um, Miss when Miss Johnston comes in. Also, love that her name is Johnston oh and not Johnston. Oh. I don't know why that I kept noticing me that too. it was Johnston. It's funny, loved but it. when she came in, it took me a second to realize she was hitting on Forrest Whitaker. I Yo. was like, "Wait, what's happening?" And then you when she came out with the number, second. and when he addressed the fact that like they're about to do a musical <laughs> number, and he was uncomfortable. He's like, "Is it are those back said, background dancers?" <laughs> I yeah, was, background this was the third song of the movie, and he calls out background. <laughs> Dude, honestly, Forrest Whitaker was bringing the comedy in this movie. Yes, yes. He was 100%. So f- his little, re- like, mumbling, like, him just being like, I don't have time for this. I, like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. you're like, did you, did you not hear what I said? Or? Just aside when we were talking just earlier, <laughs> did you understand what I said? He was so I feel like those were all improvs. I think so, too. It, I think so it too. was so good. He was so funny. He was so funny. Also, he man, was he, so good. He commit. I think every actor committed in this movie, but there's a oh, yeah. scene between Forrest and um, Young Journey. Uh, what is the actress's name again? I'm so sorry. I want to since we're Mad- introducing her, Madeline. There's a scene. There's a scene between him and her, and then a scene with Forrest and. Um, and uh miss rose and it's like yo my man is just like you just you feel sadness you feel passion like you feel lost i was like yes this is this is what happens when you have a christmas movie when you hire actors to do it and like they still can like of course play it up a little bit because it's a kids movie but there are those moments where they can really just like lean into it and just give the movie like gravitas and like grounding it and it was so exciting to see that it was so excited because a lot of other actors would have just been like been in a Christmas movie and like yeah. be all the, big. Oh, there's a lot of Shakespeare actors in here. Like the guy who played the younger Geronicus Jangle, mm. the guy who played the he, the the younger one, mm-hmm. he's like a Shakespeare player. He he like performs in Chicago and Shakespeare a ton. Like there's a and I think and I think Lisa Davina Phillip is like she's like a theater mm. an actor. Like yeah. there's like a lot of depth to the acting skills that are showing up here. Which is, I love it. You know, and then Hugh Bonneville, the guy who plays that um, landlord mm-hmm. or the bank, that he's from Downton Abbey. Yes, right. I knew he was familiar. He's, you know, one of England's like prized actors of all time. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of depthful work being done here. Oh, man. this Honestly, I thought it was so great. And then we finally um, meet Journey. It was some. By the way, oh sorry, go ahead. When they when they were like, <laughs> when they panned up to see like, to be like Journey and like the older ma or like his daughter, now an adult. Mm-hmm. I really I don't know why the way that they panned up. I was like, is it going to be Journey? <laughs> so small, yeah. That's you say. <laughs> I thought it was like just because the way that they like it was like such a reveal like what she looked like and then they were saying journey and I was like could you could it would be so fun like so it would be a moment in the movie theater everyone would just clap and like yeah. be like yeah <laughs> I mean I mean this other actress was incredible too we don't yeah we, at first you thought it was like she was just going to be a small part of the movie and then she comes and does a whole song and she no I didn't songs. because it was yeah. Anika yeah. Noni Rose I was like I was like 
literally having her in the in for that little scene that she's in in the beginning and having her not go on the journey with Journey, I was like, she's coming back later and she about better to do a song. Tear the yeah. entire house. She better <laughs> do a song, <laughs> goddamn it. That is literally, I mean, that is literally like maybe my one complaint is that you have a Nika Noni Rose in there and we have to wait to the end of the movie yeah. Yeah. to hear her bring down the house. What the, the, the song she played in like, there's different names for different parts of the of songs in the musical structure. There's like the opening, there's a the finale, right? Like there's that she played, she's saying the 11 o'clock yeah. number. The 11 o'clock the number. Le- it's that yeah. one where you're like, she, this is the, sh- this is, everybody's asleep. She mm-hmm. wakes everybody up. Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, what's that? It, uh, 11 uh, o'clock? Perfect. So, so wait. So. Sit down, you're rocking the boat. You know that song? Oh, yeah. Like, guys, and that's like a classic 11 o'clock. So number. it's supposed to be the one that like, like gets everybody back into it. That kind of basically don't nobody give a shit about any other songs in the second act of a, of a musical. Yeah. <laughs> and so then all that the other one... songs are like pushing the story for push the story forward, uh... push the story forward. So we get to the end, you know, um, and then and then you get this eleven o'clock number where everybody freaks the shit out. Which was then... the showstopper? Yeah. Is that in it's this? Quiet Uptown in Hamilton? Oh, I don't know. That's a really good question. Yeah, I don't know. What is it in Hamilton? I would say, speaking of Hamilton, I'm going to go out on a ledge here and say, I think that Jingle Jangle is the Hamilton of Christmas movies. And let me okay. explain okay. why. I'm okay with that. Go ahead. Because okay. one of the things that Hamilton does is Hamilton does a lot of homage. The, clearly, the creator understood so much it was such an appreciator of other musicals and musical styles Mm, and different things like that and integrated it so fluently into the into hamilton and similarly i think david e talbert and i don't know who the musical director is i should i be saying some i don't know i don't don't mean to omit someone but i think that david e talbert and the musical support understood music and had such an appreciation for Christmas movies and family movies yeah. that he so like seamlessly intertwined all of these different visual right. and musical Nutcracker and character mm-hmm. themes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Nutcracker. I think Mary Poppins is referenced in here. Mm. Pinocchio for sure. I mean, Oh yeah. Yeah. Rudolph. Yeah. Sorry. Rudolph I was looking was it up to try to figure out too, if it was like, if there was like one, uh, music di- director or or not, there were four writers in terms of the the songs. Um, uh, John Legend, including John Legend, including John Legend, John Legend and Philip Lawrence are the like standout names that every time they talk right. about producers, who yeah. d- did it. It's it's them, but then it's also um, uh, D- Davy Nathan and Michael hmm. Diskant. And who's cool. Davy Nathan? He has I an mean, article. Too. yeah really really awesome yeah and we get so yeah ba- basically following this story is you know it's been was it 20 years you know so, yeah. and uh it, it, the daughter has grown up and she has a she has a daughter of her own now journey forrest whitaker sends this letter to his daughter um because he is trying to find he's missing the magic he's missing something and he needs to create something revolutionary or he's finally going to lose the, the this building that's been converted into a pawn shop and she sends her and journey goes there and and at first I mean, they have this funny bit where they're like he's like <laughs> yeah she's like i'm your granddaughter yeah. and he's like he's allegedly like the name begins with, it has a u in it so that funny. scene they was have so to have crazy a u in it. <laughs> he was like she wouldn't name uh, oh yeah, yeah he is you there <laughs> <laughs> I did. And I, I love the. It was kind of uh, the thing that made you sad a little bit is that he was so untrusting that he made her sign a contract. Because you know, I feel like I thought that scene was so funny. That was, I, I he love pulls that. out yeah. a scroll. The something. contract yeah. is huge. <laughs> so this that was this yes, gave me Willy yes, Wonka vibes. Yes, it did. Yes, yeah. It did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and so did the the flying was a little was Mary Poppins. It was also Willy Wonka because they. Oh yeah, and, um, you know, yep. remember in the with Dang. the fan. And, and then also, but also Peter Pan because you have to believe in order to be able and to fly. Yeah, also so Peter Pan beautiful. because you have to believe exactly. Absolutely. And the robot that we finally get introduced to yes. looks like Wally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's got the Wally. The, was it Buddy Three Thousand? Oh wait, it. what's the friend's name? Buddy Three Thousand, which kid. is 
The friend's name is wow. Edison Latimer. Edison. That's that little boy's name. <laughs> it is Latimer because I was. Yeah. I, it was so funny because they called it Edison, Edison and I was like, I was like, oh, that's cool. His name's Edison, but I wish his name was like La- Lewis Latimer. And <laughs> yeah. wait, so his last name is yeah. Latimer? his last name is Latimer. Well, there that's you go. So when hot. he when he came out, uh, we had already seen him in the movie, but when but when he comes out once Journey is there at the same time in unison, unprompted. <laughs> Kat and I both said, love interests. Yep. He, he, <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> I literally was like, is, Wait, I what, was like, is that is a young from? Jamil White? <laughs> he looked, yes, I mean, he looked straight is, up like Urkel when he accent, first came where in. Is he this kid was so wow, yep, good, dude. I'm okay. Yep. Kieran I'm okay. Dyer. <laughs> this was his first acting role. What? Uh, this is his first role on IMDb. <sighs> Not wow. he's not not even done a anything like not even a small thing. Props before. to casting. He was so good. Every single person on here felt like, oh my gosh, look at the stars. I do think this is going to be a movie that we look back yeah. and go, wow, can you believe all those I mean, famous these, people were in this movie? I mean, these together? kids are going to be really so, so huge. I mean, it. I think it will be. I think it's going to be. I don't know. It was just exciting to watch, and then yeah, I wonder who there did the casting. Moments the casting where was great. Especially after like 2020, it's like, man, they were just like warm hearted moments that just felt good. Like watching them um, fly, like watching these kids fly with this robot felt so good. Which was also crazy because it was just like, wait, what's happening? I was 100% there. Because the robot starts flying, you're like, that's cool. And then they start flying. I was like, wait, what? We never know why anybody can fly, but you know what? It's Christmas, man. Why? Why could they? Why can he make them fly? <laughs> because they believed. Also, because the they robot believed. Was like, I always believed. worked. That's I all know. you need. That's all you need. <laughs> but the robot was a and part of it somehow. Shot. They only flew when the robot was there. Because the robot. The second was Forrest Whitaker came belief. out. The robot said, "Oh no, less belief." <laughs> and then they all fell. All right, now we're at my favorite scene when yep. we hear the story about Magic yep. Man G, That's baby. It, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm such a fan. Listen, I'm such a fan. And the thing is, watching Keegan do this scene. Magic Man. <laughs> it, it was. It was cool because at this moment, it felt like when I think about Ken Peele and how much that meant to like comedy, watching this scene, it just shows like, yo, they both are doing the thing that they love to do right now. It's like, like Jordan gets to direct these horror movies. And Keegan gets to do, like, he's he always talks about doing Broadway. He always talks about musicals. And, like, he is yeah. in a big budget black Christmas musical. Like, he's in it. I mean, there's one part when he's when he's doing um, his musical moment and uh, he's about to do a spin to, like, um, dive off of the stage. And I'm like, yo, you see, you see just joy in this man's face. And I'm like, oh! When he did the clapping, like, there was, like, he like was so into it. I was like, "Oh my god!" I this this gave me Wiz vibes to no end. When oh, the, in, yeah. in the in the musical version of the Wiz, like the stage version, there's a song called "You Wanted to Meet the Wizard." So you wanted to meet the wizard, and the wizard yes. comes out and just showboats for like the whole yes. song, <laughs> and you know he doesn't have any <laughs> powers because he's the Wiz, and you're like, you don't, you don't, you can't do shit. But the whole song is like how great he is. I, that. It gave me so those vibes so hard. This we know he can't. He has no talent, <laughs> and he's just yes. talking about how great he is. I was just gonna say the thing that really like rocked me because we know that Keegan Michael Key can like just like play this like cocky flamboyant like guy. Like he just can do it in so many different ways. But what I loved, and I don't know how much this is Keegan and how much this is David E. Talbert. But or, or really understanding the their well matched meeting, the moments when he right before he presented Buddy Three Thousand and he's breathing and ready to like the right before the curtains open and he really reveals the depth of character that he's owning in this like that he's struggling that he's nervous that he really is still this like little apprentice trying to prove himself. We got all of that just from him breathing and blinking before the curtain opens. Oh, yeah. And he reveals it. And another moment that I loved of his, which was just like, God, you're good, was when he was in the alley and he's talking to Journey and trying to convince her. I just think he does 
very depth like that's a scene to watch over and over because his uh, no. moments in that are so complex he's like you can see him like readjust and try again and make up like he's so good and then he gets, can go so big and so you know and fill up the whole space as well i think he's very talented oh he's so good also his man his intro into this I think it's just one of my favorites because, you know, they they briefly say early on, like, the princess goes and becomes the richest toy maker in the world. And you kind of see that in the in the animation. But then we cut back to his story to see like him, um, the puppets of him like sneaking out and it has that kind of revolving wall so you see the puppet and then it revolves into him backstage before he goes out I'm like it just looks so good and then when he spins and the cape is just flowing i'm like my man does he does his james brown thing when he's done singing gets down on one <laughs> yes! knee the, how dare oh, they do that the cape on. <laughs> oh my god and then amazing. like to what tessa's saying like he's so good that while he's singing and it probably was scripted, but I do think it's a lot of him too. While he's singing, the robot goes down. So as he's hitting his last high note, the high note goes from like singing to the scream at the same time. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. beautiful, brother, Perfect. beautiful. Perfect. Cat was waiting yeah. for that uh, little robot to like crash by the end of it. And I was like, right. I, I hope it I hope it works. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time he's like, an inventor too. Yes. I want it to work. That, the, to... the younger him set it up so well because i really did feel for him you know mm -hmm. um yeah but so yeah he his invention doesn't work he's right he's used stolen all the inventions used all of them and he needs to get a new one even though he's been toy maker of the year whatever it was like, six times in a row or eight times or whatever yeah <laughs> and um and so he's kind of he starts spying on uh jangle's place and he sees them discover buddy 3000 and sees them flying or whatever so he tries to go go steal it uh and meanwhile forrest whitaker's unbelief <laughs> is mm. causing the the robot to not work and he's just forcing journey to do chores and she's showing him that she has the same magic that he once did that he can she can do the thing she can you see know, the science have this she could see the science and kind of do it. They also very at you know we're definitely borrowing from the Marvel like kind of Iron Man little like doo -doo -doo -doo, that tuss, stuff. Tuss, yeah. Also like that hidden figures moment where Taraji's like looking at all the numbers and seeing all the yeah. Numbers. Oh, wow. that, did she do that in that movie? <laughs> I forgot they did. did she do that in that movie? <laughs> I think so. I'm, this is this is what I'm gonna say. You shouldn't have brought that up because that movie was supposed to be real. And this is a Christmas, a fake Christmas movie. <laughs> Taraji should not be out here seeing numbers. But, like that. but there was something. There was something. I don't know. Something about making the science, making the magic, both sort of grounded in like an understanding of the physical plane. The the moment when when she's able to do it, and she looks over to Forrest Whitaker, and 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 he's like, "You can see that," and it's like, "Yeah, can't you?" And he can't see it anymore. Mm -hmm. right. There was something about that that was like, "Yeah, like if you can understand, if you." understand physics or whatever whatever it is that's would be how you see shit you know that would be how you see shit you know to right. a, that would be a a way to sort of dramatize how you yeah. see that so um i don't yeah, know i thought a, that was cool no, I, I, thought, did, no. I thought it was i thought it was cool for this movie i think it was cool for him <laughs> I, I mean <laughs> right. i mean i think it i think it uh -oh, works uh -oh. in a i think it works in a grounded movie like that because it's like, like in queen's gambit do you guys watch yeah, it? yeah yeah, yeah. Queen's queen's gambit. Queen's that's a great that's a great know? example too yeah. of like yeah she sees <laughs> yeah. the the, the board on, on the, the ceiling scene. and she can watch it you know i don't know there's, there's something cool about I was it was really cool how they used i mean i wish i, I wish i remember some of the actual terms it was like the square root of um impossible, impossible. and she just, said the square root of impossible and the circumference of spectacular oh uh, so Look good i'm Jeff like that smile. is so you gotta <laughs> good. you gotta yeah you gotta use the <laughs> circumference of you gotta use the square root of impossible with the circumference of spectacular and he's the, like oh the best to me one of the best <laughs> moments of this whole movie was is it skipping that far? it's not skipping that far um but um when the kids are trying to get Buddy back and they have to come through the blades 
And Forrest is like, you can't. It's impossible. It's impossible. And she goes, um, you got to use... Which, which one did she say? Did she say the square root of impossible or she said the square root of... Whatever it is. He's like, no, it's just... That's just in my head. It won't work. And she's like, it will. I believe. And he's like, I don't. I do. And all of a sudden, he has that moment of just like, shit, yes. And it's just seeing... <laughs> I, I don't know. I took this movie as like people always say it, but like adults yeah. lose their imagination yeah. so fast. And I think especially black Absolutely. people, because I think as black people, especially depending on where you are, you are forced to grow up because yeah, you can't be dreaming yeah, and because shit. the world treats you, you differently. Like, like every time I see something happen to a little kid, yep. that kid, you know, a black kid can't just run down the street, okay? Because, you know, they're being hooligans. Like, white boys can do that because they're just having fun. Like, a, a kid can't, like, steal a piece of candy out of a store. Like, white kids can do that and be like, oh, they're just learning. They're just kids. I want to challenge that a little bit because I actually think that okay. there's something so spectacular and resilient about the mm. creativity and the flavor of blackness that, like, in all of these different scenarios, like, you give, like, you give like black folk, uh, you like you'd give them like a pebble in a cup, and they make it into an instrument. Like you give mm -hmm. like black folk like the scraps from like the farm, and you get soul food. Like you, mm -hmm. I just think that like the constant creativity and resiliency intertwined into blackness itself is like unstoppable. Yeah, I, I think that's true in a macro sense, but I also get what you're saying because there was a really powerful moment in the movie where, um, you know, Forrest Whitaker is yelling, Jan Mr. Jangles yelling at them because the, the, the um, you know, Buddy 3000 didn't work. And uh, the kid is like, but you're the greatest inventor of all time. And he's like, I'm not an inventor. And neither are you, Oof. you know, and it, Ooh, man, it was I like forgot. that Ugh. passing on of like, well, the world beat me up. So I lost my hope. And not only Ugh. did I lose my hope, but I'm going to rob the next generation of their hope, too, you know, and like, yeah, and, and that happens. Like there's a, a legacy of of that where when you you have people who are thinking, you know, it takes there are resilient people who break through, who do these incredible things. I think as a culture, as a, as a whole, as a community, black, the black community has always done that, but there's so many people that get left behind because they're being just beaten down by the world. And then some of the people who get beaten down turn to the, the other people and they're like, Hey, and we, we talked about this before of like, you know, even at, um, when you go into high schools or you go and they're doing like a career day or whatever. And they're oh like, my God. Hey, you know, you should, you should kind of dream realistic, you know, like just make sure you get a good job. Don't set your set your goals too high. You know, we don't want you to be disappointed. Like don't be disappointed. Like I was, you know, but people have that where they kind of already are putting these limitations on kids before they're even able to even attempt anything, which I think this little, this little girl is like breaking through. She sings a whole song where she says, the square root of possible is me. Oh, <laughs> oh so <Yeah>. good. <laughs> it's, <She's> like, <laughs> it's like actually literal. It's literal. Yeah, like the it ancestors literal. are looking down at Madeline and just being like, exactly. Yes, sweetie. Like you are it. Man. Yeah. yeah. And it's a universal thing too, which is the thing that's so great about this movie is that there's race stuff baked in, not because they're trying to, this movie isn't talking about race. It's just the with, with the black experience of the black lens, you get some of the stuff that's happening and you realize that it's a universal experience as yes. well. So you get both. So people who aren't black, go, they're like, Oh yeah, I feel that way too. And yes. Oh man, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's yeah. perfect. I, I, <laughs> I, I agree, man. Like that. I mean, even the scene, I know we talked about it briefly, the scene when they have the snowball fight, uh, there's something so fun about that because when we get to see, of course, Forrest Whitaker be the super <laughs> smart person he is with his snowball, but but to see, like, again, growing up, for me, like, my grandfather was so cool to me, like, super nice, came down for the holidays every year, super cool. And to see this, this young girl having a snowball fight 
with her granddad. Her granddad got a squad of kids. Like she got a squad of kids, and then the whole block just starts throwing us having a snowball fight. She yeah. did. They did equations <laughs> to throw snowballs at each other. It was great. I listen. I whenever I see stuff like this, I get a little choked up because when I was a kid, if I I collected bugs and I looked at the stars and shit, and I got clowned so hard. <laughs> By every yeah. body, everybody, but to see these little kids, she was just doing the math in her head. Yes. and then she would throw the snowball, and then the shit would turn into four, and they would all hit each other evenly. I was, it was that type of representation. There's not enough of that. Yeah, be smart yes. and black as a kid. Be smart and black. It's okay. Yeah, it's true, man. Yes. And she was still cool as and hell. Cool. Like at one point, at one point, Edison goes, "I stop saying something if." You, if you stop thinking and it's like her face. <laughs> oh my God. Her face. She said, she said, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Which he knew what she was thinking. So he said, if I say no, will, you stop, no, will you stop thinking? thinking it? <laughs> Yo, her face. So and it, it, you know what it was? It was a perfect scene because they stayed on that shot for like a hair long. It was just her <laughs> looking at him sideways. Like, are you crazy? <laughs> you know what I mean? Before they moved on. And I was like, this is great. This is great, man. So good. Man, that that little boy was so funny. Oh my god, he was cracking me up the whole movie. And he wasn't Um, annoying. I feel like sometimes those characters get very annoying. And even and even Journey, Journey wasn't the character that I feel like. uh, uh, You guys probably know. I can't think of the actual like film term for it at the moment. But a lot of times you get like these young um, girl characters. They make them the best in everything. You know what I mean? Um, Right. She was good, like her her granddad was. But she also still needed help, but that didn't take away from like her strength in any way. Any of the moments like when they were trying to escape. Yeah, Edison was the one steering, but that didn't take away from the fact that it was a good part of her plan as well. As much as if it was part of his plan, as much as if it was a part of Forrest Whitaker's plan. You know, it was like <laughs> they literally yeah. at the end, at the end, he's like, because she's like, I couldn't have done it without you. And he's like. I know that's not true, but thanks for saying it anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I was like, man, it was so good. Uh, when uh, when Miss Rose, I just, when she finally gets that song number written by John Legend and she's coming home uh, and she's coming back. Oh, I'm, I'm going to play that right now too. Hold on, let me the, skip to that. The most exciting thing is this has got to get an Oscar nomination. I say it now. I mean, and what gonna, are the Oscars this year? And we're going to see, we're going to see this performed at the Oscars. And then I'm yes, going to speak via, into the future. Zoom. I'm going to speak into the future that Broadway will open again. And oh snap, we, somebody Adap- adaptation will of Broadway adapt this. I mean, a hundred percent. It would be we, so wow. dumb not to. Ooh. We will get this. Uh, in on Broadway, and you know who's gonna be. This would in make it. so much money on Broadway. Who? I think I think Anika's gonna be in it. Uh-oh. I think Felicia Rashad might show up. Yo, you might have Felicia it. Rashad on Broadway. I'm speaking this into. I'm speaking this into the future. This is. Th- I'm speaking. Into and I'm gonna existence. say this. I'm, casting a I'm gonna spell. say this because because I want all of that stuff to happen too. And for anybody who is near a drive-in, they they playing it at the drive-in somewhere Wait, nearby in LA. So are like, they? Let's yes, go. I'm, go- I'm oh. going to see this at a drive-in. I didn't know that. And I'm going to sing oh out the top of my lungs in my Let's car. Let's go. <laughs> okay. That'd be so That's dope. That's awesome. Yes. I'll put, the, I'll put a link so in the chat. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I'm just watching Forrest do his dance. My man is just out here. Just Also, I know we said it. Look, man, the set design in this shit is fucking awesome. But these costumes... It's so good. These costumes, man, it just feels like... It's so cool looking at Forrest Whitaker right now in this kind of old timey outfit that feels like something you would just see Hugh Jackman or any one of these white dudes. Yes. In. And it's like looking at Madeline and like with the pigtails, but like, I don't know, man. It, it, we need it, to talk about the hair. Woo! First off, they got black hairstyles in this jump. They got so many. This was so. There was like a cool, like Afrofuturistic vibe, th- f- like totally intertwined into this like imaginary world. The younger, um, uh, oh gosh, what's his name? The younger Geronicus Jangle. Mm-hmm. He his vest was like had like a kente kind of yeah. pattern to it. 
and it was like mad, you know? So like they mixed that in and they had like all of this little like Afrofuturism like stuff and that, and the hair, like Journey's hair Oof. was totally like modern Afrofuturistic with the like metal clock clogs and like screws in it. Like it was so, Felicia Rashad's hair looked even amazing. Realize she Anika had... looked amazing. Yeah. I didn't even realize she had cogs in her hair until when he was, when Forrest was looking for her <laughs> in the scene when she like sn- snuck into the, um, yeah. into the, and she was like, and he was like explaining like, oh, she has, you know, have you seen her? She has cogs in her hair. I didn't even realize that. I feel like that was improvised too. I feel like Whitaker yeah. just <laughs> yeah. was working. Also, this. either that or he's just such a great actor. He makes everything feel like he's just, <laughs> it's not scripted. Felicia Rashad is also a person like that. Mm. Felicia Rashad does a lot of behind the scenes gifting bestowing like supporting funding she's Mm -hmm. you know she she has a lot to do remember Chadwick Boseman talked about how Felicia Rashad was actually the one who connected him (laughs) to Uh, uh, Denzel Denzel Mm -hmm. exactly while they were at while he was um, at while he was still in school she taught at Howard she teaches at Howard some some some. yeah could you imagine being in an acting class and your teacher is Felicia Rashad I uh, when I was going to school, I was looking at that stuff. I was like, "Oh, should I try to go <laughs> to like Howard <laughs> to see if I can have some kind of amazing. connection to to Felicia Rashad?" I would have. I knew nothing. Um, like I didn't know. Yeah. Like I like. I know, and you were yeah, close I, to Howard I, too. I, yeah, I, you know, I when I was in college, um, I ended up for a summer. Um, one of my church, one of my. Um, Someone at my church put me in contact with a woman who taught the summer acting program at Howard. So I ended up like volunteering there for the summer. Um, but it's interesting because like before I went to college, like I I didn't know how people did anything. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody in DC was like, yeah. hey, these are the schools. As a matter of fact, talking about, you know, how I think Brillock was saying, you know, when Janka was like, no, you're not an inventor. As a matter of fact, for a lot of people, I think here in DC, it was, yo, get a government job. You know what I mean? So like nobody was telling you how to right. do any of these non quote unquote real job things. Like it's such a testament to h- how much you worked, Jara, because now you are like a multifaceted like producer, director, writer, creator that's like worked in so many different companies and avenues and like worked for yourself. Like it and like the fact that you just like figured that out and made relationships along the way to get it. It's like such a testament to your love oh, girl, for you the stop arts it. and it. also how hard you, you work. Stop it. Thank you. Girl, you stop it. You about to make this black man turn red out here. Let me go ahead and get out there. Yeah. <laughs> but it's real. But, but, it's real. But like, it's one of those things where like that is the, to me that is the ultimate goal of like all this. It's like we can get to a point where again like Forrest Whitaker and like Felicia Rashad is done. It's like and you can I feel like one little thing could put somebody on. Like one little nudge could be like either yeah. the encouragement. Because yes, I think of Chadwick all the time. And, you know, Felicia did help get him to London to study. Um, but there's also, I think so many times where like some of these famous artists are just like genuinely nice to someone else. And that is all that person needs yes. to keep going two more days. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Um, Oh man, this movie, honestly, I'm so yeah. happy. Like, yeah. this movie. Keegan did oh, it for yeah. our, Ke- our yes, podcast. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Keegan was the reason. <laughs> he totally Absolutely. Did. Wow, you're right. Yes. Yeah. Man. Absolutely. Keegan was what? <laughs> Say it's it real. again for the people in the Yo, back. Keegan came on before we even released one. I want to talk about Lisa Davina Phillip more. Yes. Oh, yes. oh, yeah. Yes. Well, do we talk about her her the, when she gets ki- when she gets kissed for the first time? <laughs> and she like literally just is like holding this look. And I was, I literally, oh my God, I was dying. It was she's just sitting there silently with her eyes silently closed. Silently with her eyes closed. She's like, mm-hmm. yo. <laughs> and, he, and, and Forrest Whitaker is like, uh, Does not Yo, I thought that scene was so great because I was at home audibly cheering. You going for it, bro? You go, he going for the kiss? He going for the kiss? He, Dude, how does this work? Choke. I haven't used oh this God. in so long. And then she just she just drives away singing. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but she also is. Oh, I think she's a. She is, and it's something about 
I think maybe, you know, sometimes you can take too many meetings, but it was something about early on in the movie when we first see her. And then um, the second time we see her and like somehow she's like, she got wrapped up with um, Jangles. And she's like, I'm just trying to express myself. And she just keeps trying to get him out of his shell and out of this funk. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's yes, like she has a crush on him, but up. it's also it's like, I feel like, Black women are also always known to be the backbone and always be supporters. And like to see this woman throughout this entire movie know that like, yo, he just needs one bright spot. Even even when the granddaughter comes, mm-hmm. she's like, I heard your granddaughter's here. That's going to be fun. Like she just keeps trying. It's so funny that you say yeah. that too, because I, in that first song, the thing that I latched onto the most was that like, it was like, yeah, he's down. He's, he's not uh, going for it and she's trying to push him to to get out of that mm-hmm. funk that he's in but right. Kat was like oh, well, I'm not ready for this scene right now like I'm not ready for a uh, for a seduction scene and I was like yes it's a, yes it's a seduction scene but the point of that is <laughs> her getting him out of this yeah, it's tr- funk it's exa- that he's in yeah. like it's, it's both of those totally. like it is true that's that that's how she feels about him and also this is the like that moment of like you know you know, pick yourself up, you know, like get out of that funk. Uh, I'm, right, so exactly, for, yeah. I'm so here for it. Oh, I just think she was miraculous. The whole thing, every time she came on the screen, I was so happy she was yeah. there. It was just, when she showed up in the movie, I was like, oh, we got a musical. Yes. Like, <laughs> this is a musical. She is bringing oh. it. Every second, every breath. The, there's a way that musical actors act through a song and utilize the musicality to add to what they're saying and go from phrase to phrase. Like that's what she was doing. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh, she's a, it's a workshop. She's a, you know, like she's showing you, this is what you do with a song. Oh God. She's just young. Oh man. I, I'm just, I don't know guys, this movie just made me feel happy. Like I, like I I would say something to Hollywood, but I'm just kind of like, Hearing James say that um, David sold this off a pitch, it just makes me so happy that this dude got this chance, man. Like, I I don't even know what to say. It's like, I didn't... But also, uh, here's the thing. He doesn't need a chance. He's already proven himself he's been over and over and over so again. Long, yeah. And also, any Black director... I'm sorry to speak over you, but I just want to add one more thing, which is that any Black director who's working with the little crap budgets that they're doing and making amazing f- films, like, then, yeah, no kidding, they're going to knock it out of the park when you actually give them a budget. Yeah. He proved yeah, himself. I mean, yeah, and I was, looking, I was looking at him, too, because I was like, oh, why do I... like? okay, why is David Talbert doing this movie? And I looked it up and it's like, he's done like 30 plays. <laughs> he's, wow. He's written 30 plays, something crazy like that. Wow. Six movies, a handful of TV shows, a few novels. Like, it's like, my man wow. has done, <gasps> there are like three books, like the three novels under, under his belt as well. And it's like, he's been working for so long. Wow. <laughs> and it's like, they finally gave him a couple dollars to make a movie. Like, wow! Uh, I think he produced it too, right? Mm-hmm. He was a part. Yeah, he was, yep, he was a producer. On I'm it, just yeah. thankful for this because I, I didn't realize. Like, I, I will say, I knew I was gonna come in with a little bit of bias because I do like Christmas movies, and um, I know my little cousins kept pitching it, but I didn't realize how much I needed to see something like this because to me, it was yes. Well, people say black excellence, like yeah, I think. Like, bro, I said, I mean, I think there's one or two things I could, like, say, uh, but whatever. It's like, it was just so nice to see this budget, see these cast, see these kids. I, I don't know. These costumes, this choreography, <laughs> this dance, this intertwined mixed cast, this excellent legends leading, you know, yeah. in their acting, and then these brand new faces who are meeting these legends Ugh. absolutely, hands down. God. I mean, it's it's beautiful, man. Yeah. Uh, like, it's an instant classic. It is. It is absolutely. It is. And I just hope. I, I know it's been on. Um, uh, as we record this, it's been on Netflix's like top ten list for like uh, a week now, maybe a little bit over it. Uh, and I just hope it kind of stays. There. I hope it has a resurgence back when we get closer to Christmas. I, I just want more people to yeah. watch this. Yeah, I can't imagine it. Uh, yeah, I, they need to. They need to push this movie for sure. It's. It can't get buried in the Netflix algorithm. It's. 
it is it's a it's a, it's everyone needs to watch it because it's just a fun holiday movie that's filled with joy yes. and, life. and it like it it should be at the at the level of a of a greatest showman or or whatever you know like because it's it is that good um yeah it's so it's so fun i love it um kelly clarkson brought madeline onto her show because she was so amazed by Madeline's what singing. oh so, yeah. her yeah. singing was so good that, man i can't wait yeah. to see what this little girl does there's a fast company article about this that i have not read i've only just now seen it but he's he's had this idea for 20 years wow <gasps> oh my gosh wait can i just also say like you guys as like creators wow. i want you to hear the lesson in the movie and also of the creation of this movie which is in the movie even though whitaker lost his invention he still because he's an inventor it was about his belief. It was about the magic and the belief. And mm-hmm. he had more inventions out coming out of him and flowing out of him. So like no one can steal your idea. Nobody can take and ruin mm. and that doesn't stop you. Like it's just once about... a great inventor, always a great inventor. Exactly. And that's yeah. you guys in your careers. Cause I know you guys have had some ups and downs and you guys have so much, but like what you need to like remember is like the power of the three of you when you guys work together, you're unstoppable. And you have no, like, and there's just so <laughs> many different ideas that can flow out of you. You're, it's really, I think you guys are need to just take the lesson from the movie for real. Yeah. And then also the lesson of the creation mm. of this movie, which is that there, it, he he's had this idea for 20 years wow. and he's created all these different other things and built his way up. And now the perfect year for mm-hmm. this to come out the perfect timing and you know that he thought that 2016 and 2008 was the perfect year for it you know that mm-hmm. like but this was the perfect year and it is the truest gift i think jingle jangle is the best thing that's happened in 2020 yeah <laughs> i feel good i honestly yeah. feel good I have it up right now on pause and I'm like Trump lost and jingle jangle was the best thing that happened. Yeah, well, listen, Bray, like, we offic- <laughs> at true. this moment, we officially know jingle jangle exists. Um, Trump may have lost, but he's still doing shady shit. So jingle jangle is the best thing that's happened. In this I got to say this too. I, I have never laughed harder than when the second time those backup dancers pop up and then Forrest Whitaker goes, they are a group. <laughs> they are good. They are a group. That was amazing. Those all, all three of those backup dancers were incredible. I love them so much. I think amazing. that's who John was in a past A backup life. dancer? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I like, there was a part of me that was like, I was like, damn, I couldn't even get an audition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, I mean, you could have been, you could have been young, <laughs> young Keegan. Young, Ke- I know, man. Truly, when I was looking at that, Brillstein Entertainment is one of the producers, and I was with Brillstein when they was working on this movie. <laughs> I literally <laughs> was, like, was oh, looking they, at they the dude that. who played younger, uh, younger Keegan, and I was like, I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, damn, I, I missed out. I, yeah, I, I am not where I want to be because that. <laughs> That's I, the audition I should have had. I should have at least had that come audition. On. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Ab- absolutely. That dude didn't sing, did he? There's no reason. I don't even he think he didn't even sing. He didn't even sing in that job. He I didn't know. sing. I know. There was a part of me that was like, oh, well, maybe. And it was like, he didn't really even sing. He was like a part of the. I was like, I could have. No. Come on, man. I could have done that. No. <laughs> he you was so good, though. I, sometimes I see people who, who are like me and I, I don't like them, but he was really good. Oh, he was like, Oh. Yeah, he was great. The only thing that yeah, sucks about this. And it doesn't. And it's just a, a personal thing. It's like, I know COVID is hitting and everyone's being safe, but I'm like, this is a movie out of watch. Like, my family has nothing but, I think I've talked about it on the podcast, we don't have boys in my family anymore. Like, we just have, like, a bunch of girls from, like, one. What yeah, from, like, one till uh, my niece, uh, little cousin, uh, called me last week. The other one is 14, about to turn 14. And I'm like, just a bunch of little girls. I'm like, this would have been so fun to watch on Christmas Eve. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. they would watch a movie. You can next year. You're right. You you're can. right. It's, a, it's, it's legendary. It, it'll be around next year. I and should see Jingle Jangle too. Like, where's, like, wh- like, what's the sequel? Like, are we, like, I don't, 
I will watch thirty yeah, Jingle Jangle I, movies. I do want them to to give <laughs> you're us right, some time. Right, I right. think to let it grow. But I would love to see Journey as the store shop yes. owner yes. running the shop. Come on, yes. Um, I do no. think that if I had grown up with this, it would have changed me because I grew up with like Rudy Huxtable oh. as the pe- person that people were like, "This is who you're like." You know, like if I had had like journey jangle as the like thing that people were like this is who you could be like this is who you're like like i I think that would really have changed me yeah and i think it would have changed the way people experienced me as well which is even maybe the more yeah that's deep if i would have had edison latimer instead of steve urkel well james he (laughs) had no bugs james he had no bugs shut up (laughs) (laughs) he was in a (laughs) he had no bugs i don't know if this I think he might be he said, All right, I'm he said, we done? <laughs> he said, great job. You're oh, an my God. Oh. Uh, did y'all feel it when he's... Yes. <sighs> I liked when he went to Journey. He said, I really, I really like you And it ran away. <laughs> and it ran away. Oh. <laughs> and then fell. Yeah. Oh, oh he's so special. <sighs> There's so many special moments in this. Yeah. I just, man, uh, I don't even have anything oh. else to say. I would talk to Hollywood. I'm just happy. So I'm like, you know what? It, it's just, yeah. I'm happy little kids get to see this. I'm happy little kids. You know what I'm happy about? I'm happy that black kids get to see this, but I'm happy kids of other races get to see this too. Because exactly. they get exactly. to see, because I, I don't think, I don't know about you guys, but I don't think I ever noticed it when I was a kid that when I was watching these movies, whether it's a Christmas movie or an action movie or one of these just kids movies, that they weren't black kids in it. I was just watching because they were a fun kids movie. And then when I got older, I was right. like, oh, all these things I grew up loving, I was never a part right. of this. So, you know. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I this is I just wrote about this on Instagram that I think that there's a really important part about representation, which is people are saying, you know, with like Kamala, they're like, um, oh, this is like so good for young women of color, little girls of color. Are so It's so good. And it's like, of course it is. But the thing is like women of color know we belong. We we have all the dreams in the world. Melissa's nodding her head along <laughs> with me. Like, you know, like it's, it, we know we belong. We know where we can go and how far we can reach. The problem is that people and other demographics are not used to seeing us there. So they're not going, hey, I've got this opportunity you would be great for. And they're not, and they're challenging and questioning and going, "Mm, is she the leader that I should follow? Because they're not practice Mm. watching it. So representation is so important for people of other demographics so that they can get used to seeing other folks in these roles, Yeah, like in life. Right, it's so exciting. I'm happy, I might watch this again. Jingle jangle. Um, all right. all right. Well, I mean, I don't do bits anymore, so I just feel like we should just probably just cool. move on. That's great. <clears throat> great. Yeah. Because yeah. your boy just doesn't even do. All bits right. Let's anymore. move on. Break. I don't mm-hmm. even remember the last time I did. Okay. A bit. You can not bounce your shoulders. I don't even remember the last time I yep. did a bit. We got it. Why? Okay. I don't remember last time. Why are you singing? I did it. That's not bad. Okay. That went bad. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Honestly, that was thank beautiful. Because I don't remember. Yeah. Wow. Talk about Okay. Our all right. Can we move on yeah. now? Yeah, that's an homage. All we can right. move on. I've been saying that this whole time. Wow. <laughs> right. It's time for the cause. We rate and review films. Wait, wait, wait. I think oh. there could be a squirrel in here. here it is. Because Uh-oh. there was that, that, the white snow and you could swirl that up with this chocolate. Tessa, I'm not sure you know how to no, swirl. I, where I, you I, like, I, I feel like that, 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 that scene, that's wait, that's, wait, that's, that scene, that snowball scene was the, was the wait, swirl. Wait, I'm not, they were yeah. rolling that. I'm not sure Tessa knows how to swirl. Mrs. Johnston could have gotten with the, no, no, dare you. She was in the Django. I know. I'm just saying she could have she could have been like, yeah, I'm into you, Jangle. But, you know, like I told you, you got to have some fun. Monogamy so. is patriarchy. Monogamy right. is patriarchy. Wait, you're right. you're what right. is happening? She can get with whoever she wanted to get with. Miss Johnson. Right. Wait, wait a like, second. I'm with you. I'm with you, Wait too. a second. Get it. Get I, it. No. 
Miss Johnson. We just out here. I'm not a part fun. of any of this. Just have fun, I'm not a part of any of this. She got this, mistletoe. No, I'm part she of it. Mistletoe <laughs> yeah, she been making it yeah, around. Just in this. Oh, I I love the nod to the post office to oh, the yeah. post service. She right. She was a postal service. She was like. She was a postal service and she was always like, we always deliver our packages on time. And I was like, whoa. I almost, Working did out. they know? Did they know the significance of this? Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> of course not. Not at the time, probably. <laughs> oh, man. Um, anyway, we rate and review films not based on how much we like them, but whether or not they help the cause of more leading black actors in Hollywood. So if we think a film fully helped the cause, we get a black fist. If we think it somewhat helped the cause, we give it a white palm. And if we think the film didn't really help the cause at all, we don't give it anything. So on the count of three, we're going to lift up our ratings for Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey. All right. One, two, three. Come on, baby. Come on. Well, so everybody put in two. That's how to get us against the rules. Wait, how many said? Eight fists. Okay, I'm gonna eight give. It, I'm gonna do it too. Eight fists. I'm gonna do it too. I'm gonna do it too. What is this show? Yeah, yeah. He's doing the snowball stank. I love. It. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait, I just passed that. That girl got it, man. Wait, I just passed girl. that. I bet you she's a famous Instagram dancer. I'm gonna look her up. I mean, she was giving it. Anyway, uh, of course. I, I mean, this movie has to get all the fists. It's. Uh, it's an instant Christmas classic. Um, incredible acting, introducing actors who have to have a career Better. after this. Uh, I mean, yeah. You know what? It's I everything see? you could want. I want to see everyone tag their children watching this movie. Yes, that's yeah. fun. I want to see everyone taking pictures of all their children of different colors and genders in front of this movie, watching it. And I want them to hashtag Black Man Can't Jump and Jingle Jangle and Netflix. <laughs> I want to see that. I want to see a movement of that. I'm down for that. I'm that. down for that. Hashtag. I'll, hashtag. Jank. No, that sounds weird. Jingle Jangle Kids. Yeah, Jingle Jangle like, Kids. That was like so good when Kamala, um, when people had like all the kids watching her um, her speech. Oh, I love oh, that. Yeah. You want to say break? Uh, I was just gonna, I was just gonna thank Tessa for being on and thank you for letting me elbow my. You way know in. you're always welcome, <laughs> Tessa. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Do you like anytime. to promote anything? I like to promote another podcast that John and I do together. It is called the Great British Baking Pod. I don't know if he's mentioned it on this he has. Um, <laughs> podcast yet, but it is a great joy. And if you are a fan of Great British Baking Show, like I am, um, we just sit around and talk about Great British Baking Show. Well, this current season. This current season. We just chat like if you were sitting on the couch with us and we go on tangents and talk more about the show than the bakes. And we act like we know what we're talking about when it comes to baking and we don't. And it's a delight. So please listen. And also on Instagram, you you can find me at, at Tassandra, which is fine. But I... Also, would love to talk to you on the Great British Baking Pod Instagram. Um, that would be delightful. And if you want to talk about cakes or bakes or who's lost and who won, I want to talk about that. Another thing is that I'm in a series called Now What on Soul Pancake, um, thanks to the recommendation of the great Rachel Edwards. Um, and Black People Helping Black People, she's my first job. <laughs> um, I would tell you, you said that. <laughs> Hilarious. And um, it's really cool. Um, weekly, I have a show where I interview a different activist about a different social justice issue. And we learn some stuff. We talk, we play, we laugh. It's a very cool show. It's been an honor to do it. And I'm so excited to have more eyes meeting these activists and hearing and learning from them. So um, I would love for you to check that out as well. It would mean a lot to me, actually. Doing the work. Doing the work. Amazing. You can find us at Blackman Podcast on Instagram and Twitter. Blackmanpodcast.com is our website where you find links to our merchandise, um, where we have shirts, T-shirts. Uh, actually, I think they have masks now. Wait, are you serious? <laughs> on there. Whoa. Yeah. And there's a sale going on. I think everything's 35% off. So, um, yeah, check that out. Um, also, if you rate and review us on iTunes, give us five stars. Uh, we'll read your review on the air. This we got a really really super short one. This is just from Mar N N B S. It says great uh, podcast. There we go. <laughs> hey. And you can follow me at John Braylock. You can follow me at James Third Comedy. 
third is three RD. You can follow me at Gerard Milligan on Twitter and Instagram. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for listening. Oh, and man, that was we so will good. see you next week. Forever. <laughs> Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Produced by Melissa D. Bonts. Executive produced by Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. To listen to this podcast ad-free, sign up for Forever Dog Plus at foreverdogpodcast.com slash plus. Check out video clips of our podcast on YouTube at youtube.com slash foreverdogteam. And make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at foreverdogteam to keep up with all the latest Forever Dog news.